this is IBM Museum. And unlike a previous video where I had a, a couple 3197 display stations from IBM that I couldn't get you know any video from, the unit, uh, they both um, don't even have that, that power light show up anymore. And I've heard that those um, the power supplies for those units can fail in this case. Um, gate was getting a little bit of noise with them, but I'll have to investigate a little bit further. But for this video behind me, I have a, and it's called a, um, it's identified for the mall number of, of being a 3488. And this is actually the an info window G. Um, IBM had a, the series of later uh, twin X terminals that they called the info windows. Um, and I wanted to uh, have one of these units. I, I expressed an interest recently as uh, thinking that uh, I, I, I'd like to have one around because in this instance, I it doesn't have an integrated display. I'll go over where that uh, video comes out of the unit. I wanted something that I could capture the video um, later on when I'd go through and um, I'd start up my AS400 that I have here uh, and be able to have a system console that I could connect to that that I could show the video uh, up on the screen. Uh, the exact video, I wouldn't have to go through and capture it with a camcorder or any other thing. Um, on my PS2 videos, that's what I've kind of worked towards as well. Within that, there's the MAL 25, and both the 8086 version, the 286 version, and a 25SX version. And in those instances, I've gone through for the lower end models I have, the 8086 based and the 286 based units, do you have a, something that replicates the video to an external screen as well? Actually, you know, a 15-pin um, connector, standard VGA-style connection um, that I have set up for those models. And the 25SX is, is a sub-model that has external video connection. So among all my PS2s, I'm able to go through and capture that, uh, that video externally, show it, present it on the screen, record it in OBS um, through that, and it, it helps quite a bit in the video. So I'm really anticipating using this unit later on. Now I'll go over the connectors. I'm gonna get flipped around. I'll probably at some point, I'll turn off the, uh, the webcam view of my recording machine here. And I don't have the webcam in front since this is a kind of a really just a low uh, profile um, machine as we'll see. And this is truly kind of a, a, a pizza box style what they call the, uh, just a, a flat, uh, roughly square unit. And going through, of course, there's a power switch on the front. I do have this connected to power and we will um, power it up in just a moment. I'll see what I can do to kind of spin it around with those connections. And it does have some sort of a, a feature connector that may be even like a, uh, who knows, a light pen or something else that goes through and uh, adds to the capabilities of the unit. The um, 122 key keyboard, in this instance, is plugged in with that RJ45 um, sort of connection um, like the other info window malls have. And next to it, I, at one point I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. Um, that has a, a PS2 style plug. Um, I don't know if I want to, yeah, let's see if we can work the camera to get zoomed in without having to, uh, to move it around too much. But that is a PS2 connection. I thought, hey, that could be a kind of a duplicate for the, um, for the um, keyboard connection, you know, which is kind of cool. They had a, a PS2 um, a host connect keyboard 
that was 122 key key. And I just thought IBM was being kind of adaptable. But it got thinking in another way. I thought, gee, that's probably a pointing device connection, like a mouse. And that's even more cooler. And it does indeed work that way. I'm going to kind of try and show there's not anything on the other side of this, but I want to show underneath and kind of the back connections and get the get the cords out of the way. And this is indeed the the video out standard VGA style connection uh, power connection here. It does have a printer connection a lot like the um, the 31 um, 97 had and um, then it at the top of this and I don't know if I lost a little bit of altitude with my camcorder or not but it has the um, a DB15 now I, I tried to go through and connect um, the standard info window style um, and they're both, you know, this, they, they don't make, this is some other sort of, um, cable. And I don't know why IBM did it different, but I'm going to have to figure this out before I connect it up to a host. Um, that's, was the info window style, uh, connection. Here is the same sort of thing, uh, on a, typically for a terminal emulation board. Or these these terminals otherwise when they had a DB15 was that it takes it and it tees off the twin axe and I'm going to do a video later on of the of the um, these the twin axe cabling what you, what you'd see for those what it the appearance of those different connections are like but um, you know it's just something to figure out um, I'll have to go through and um, see if I can get a twin X style um, connection that would that would uh, connect to that. So I'm going to probably have to adjust the screen a little bit, the screen input, but let's go through um, and I'll switch. over to that okay I guess I'll just I can go through and I can switch and ultimately what I'll do is I will hide my built-in webcam as I go through and power it up and of course we have no signal initially but I'm going through and powering it up. We heard a brief beep. Okay. And we get that nice display screen. Okay. And the presentation. And this is... Um, I'm not seeing where it's necessarily uh, stretched in this... Um, the setup. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a four by three or a 16 by nine ratio. And I have it, of course, set up as the um, the 16 by nine right now. Let's see for four by three. See what that does. Not really. And I just ultimately, I, I uh, let's see if I can keep it as the as this 16 by 9 um, and then the station address what what looks to be the station address is in that lower right hand corner and it looks to be like a 1 slash 8 but look at this this is me moving that mouse and nice little uh, red block uh, cursor and it does say setup down here. I'm gonna go through and click on that and look at that beautiful configuration. 
Uh, move cursor to uh, selected desired selection and press enter. Um, and this is the so-called online setup. I mean, I always know it as the offline setup as effectively where the um, it's not uh, currently connected to any host because you're going through and you're setting uh, the addresses of, of the system too. Now for the first selection, we have lock sessions. And I suppose you could, you could go through and you can press the cursor keys. You can navigate this by keyboard as well. But you go through and you can set a password for this unit. And unlike the other info windows, they have keys. This has where you set, you know, a key to basically lock. And then you take the key so no one can use your workstation. Let's say also have a key. Um, but this has where the operator could go through and set their own password to the unit. So set up display. So we have first the alarm volume set to currently set to off. If we do one, two, three, four. And I don't know from your perspective on my microphone, you, it, it ramps up the volume. So in this unit, unlike the other um, on-screen setup terminals that I featured, this has more of a true volume indication. You can go through for your cursor to set it as a the style, um, as an underline or block. And yellow, of course, it's currently set to underline uh, for this unit. We're not necessarily seeing a cursor for the keyboard uh, in this instance. We're seeing the mouse uh, being a relatively a block. Um, cursor because that's the, really the only thing that works for it. And then blink is yes, a uh, curtain set to yes, and you can also turn that off. So if you, the thought is that uh, when this is an operation that, that has that iron line cursor that blinks to show you where you are. And then it has the row column indicator is on. You can turn that off. That is a, um, uh, typically shown at the bottom of the screen to show you uh, ha rather handy to where your uh, selection, where your, where you, which field that you're on right then. The rule line uh, style of horizontal or vertical or cross. Um, I'm not really certain on that one. Horizontal, I don't, I doubt if it would go through and change uh, the screen here, but um, just the, um, you can go through and have it as horizontal, vertical, or cross selections and follows cursor. So maybe someone that's a little bit more familiar with these terminals can specify um, what exactly that means prior to the operation of me getting it connected to a host. I would take it the horizontal is the default for that first selection. And this has an auto dim, as some of the uh, later terminals do. They, uh, the 3180, I think the 3196, 3197, they do. They can be uh, set to auto dim, um, and even the info windows, as this one. And then you can set the delay five, ten, or twenty minutes. The yellow has it set at 10 currently, probably the default mid-range. And the lock session is, is, in other words, if it dims the screen, it goes through and sets that applied um, or that, that password is in effect. So just like a lock screen on um, a Windows computer um, or Chrome OS or other operating systems, where uh, to go through and get back in after that um, it does that process, you have to go through and specify the password. Now there's in the upper 
uh, right hand corner there's that more and there's also this F8 uh, meaning equaling uh, forward to go through to another screen um, and then um, as I tell on the keyboard you know you can press the space bar select but it's stand display uh, off PS ECB1 ECB2 or ECB3 and then uh, auto session disconnect yes the delay of a half hour um, one hour or uh, two hours or four hours it's set to four hours and it's currently set to uh, the auto session uh, disconnect of yes um, and does it even have more I went through before and now you have it up in the you have a plus and minus to ver apparently advance uh, between the screens I didn't see a okay that goes to just saying that password there's another place uh, for the display settings and going through and you know as it says at, once you get through setting what you want uh, then you go through and uh, save and exit to get back to the menu where you have uh, the next item up is browse display information the display sessions you can set as one two three four or none and then I mean I'm assuming none is where you would go through and you'd have a um, a pr it just as a printer session only not necessarily a um, uh, anything on uh, display or ability to work with on the screen for the display sessions you would just have it as a printer session and you're able to go through and and set up a single printer session in this case and sessions that just means uh, basically it acts like different terminals or different um, a, a, a printer session as well you have a effect to uh, control a printer from the device and you can go through and toggle through those display sessions just like they were separate terminals uh, typically through a, a key sequence so as an operator you could have even in this instance four um, separate terminal effects um, and even one printer session and I think you can go to four huh okay it's just beeping at me when I try and go through and so huh I don't know what the thing is to um, going through it's just beeping at me for okay invalid key is pressed I don't want to necessarily do a reset or anything else like that shared addressing and then the dis uh, display address one um, that's for that session and and typically if you're able to select more sessions and maybe that takes that that um, that feature up that plug in on the side to be able to go through and set it any higher on those terminal modes I maybe I guess I don't know um, and uh, they would be listed here but you can set the station address huh let's look at that again or there's some other condition um, that has to be set there to go through and uh, be able to select more sessions and this is apparently locked into um, 
uh, session zero, which should be the, in effect the um, the uh, control console or the system console, if it were connected to the right port. Um, and that's what I'm wanting to use it for is to be able to have that um, initial terminal that goes through and displays the information when you're going through and um, IPLing the the host initial program load. Um, the display character set being country specific or multinational. See it just anything on this uh, screen it just beeps at me instead. Column separator enable or disable. So there has to be something else that goes through and uh, and activates this somehow. Huh. I'm not able to change anything on that screen. Let's go exit back to the main menu. Set a printer. And you have the ability for setting up uh, lines per inch, characters per inch, the print quality, depending uh, probably upon the um, the um, connected printer. I think the PS is postscript. Character height, with standard to double, print key being local or system. And there's a print key on the keyboard and just probably how it treats that, um, that print key. Form feed after print, yes or no. And press F10 for the attached printer initialization. I don't have any attached printer to initialize. Um, and there's that save and exit. Once you get done with those options, browse printer information. You can go through and select a wide variety of IBM models. This is going through the same way where it's not allowing me to select anything else on the screen other than the, it's got the pro, I guess a pro printer. 4201 slash 4202 as the default. Even marks that LaserJet and ThinkJet models as a trademark of the Hewitt Packard company, HP. Set up input devices, uh, keyboard clicker, yes. We have that volume set to off. And that is the number of clicks I mean, it still seems like it does four clicks when you have it set to high uh, but either off or one it'd probably be the one that I would uh, set this as you have uh, a keyboard type and magic rate of normal or fast and delay of short normal or long mouse speed you can set a speed uh, between slow one two three or fast on the horizontal and vertical um, axes and it looks like it's set to the right in the middle for the two um, on that mouse speed mouse double click Interval in seconds, a quarter of a second, half a second, three quarters of a second, one second, or two seconds. And then again, we have that more with a plus sign. So we're going to go forward. And you have the ability to change um, the uh, left and right mouse buttons. Set up the calculator. Whether it's a decimal point, like uh, probably the United States, or a comma, like uh, Europe and the UK would have. Uh, set color, color uh, palette and 
So there we have the ability to um, go through and I'll press F9 or F10. Okay, so you're adjusting apparently, and it has kind of the colors left to right at, on the top, this top row, and then kind of the tint uh, in the lower portion. And it doesn't really show what's the default, probably the mid-range is what I would expect. Um, okay. Not sure. Okay, and I'm not wanting to do that for my green. And it... Um, it went through and um, changed F9 or F10. Then it's telling me invalid key. Okay, and I don't know if I necessarily want to save or exit that. Um, I want to exit, but not. Okay, cor oh, okay, course adjustment or fine adjustment. So if you would do F10, and you can click on that link, and then you have an F11 for default. So the fine adjustment, there you move your sliders. Ah, okay. And I guess you have to do like a save exit to get out of that course or uh, fine adjustment. What does the more, does it do more colors? Oh, alternate red, alternate green. So some pretty elaborate uh, setup to Yes, and then you, there you have your your background uh, background of your push button ruler bar cursor. I guess you have a selection of your color, your trim border, window push button frame, and it. It shows the settings. I don't know if it would go through and um, for this, you could have different backgrounds on your to your different display stations, too. Uh, so you could be able to tell the difference between the sessions and assumably they would be listed here for that um, two three and four I would think and then you're not able to I, For that print um, That printer session. I don't know what it would come down to there mouse pointer we could change the color of the apparently of the of the uh, mouse pointer to whether it's uh, red or green, still say stayed red here. Uh, maybe once we exit, it would go through and say that is a green pointer. Uh, but we could go through and modify that divider line and screen border. Um, so whole bunch of settings 
that are within that screen. Um, color has been reset to a default value. When you click on that, um, that F11 or press the F11. So that's the color settings. And then the setup offline. Okay. Sessions will be terminated. Press enter to continue or any other key to quit. I don't have an active session anyway. So enter. Okay. And that takes us to where we have the customized workstation. This is the values that would typically appear uh, for your offline. Um, and okay there I'm able in this screen to go through and make those adjustments and selecting the addresses that I would have and of course if you have zero selected for your first one it puts an asterisk that you cannot select that for the later addresses. So you could go through and like one, and that goes through and, you know, blocks out um, that selection from any of the lower entries. Kind of cool there. Printer sessions, we can do one and you can set the address of whatever remains for that. So kind of neat. It does have a more. Let me go through back in one to one. Um, as I say, if I were to select the more addresses, we could we could probably look at that menu and it'd probably go through and um, we could set different backgrounds and all that for the uh, for the, um, and I guess the red is identifying. We have to set this, the address if we, um, if we have that enabled. So more, or the F8 for forward. And then there we have the printer selections. So where it was beeping at me before, it is allowing me to go through and select, and these are all the little uh, specific printer um, settings that you can have enabled. Very elaborate. Um, and so let's save and exit that. Here's your serial number update. It's produced in uh, in the uh, factory called uh, number that's 23 in IBM nomenclature. A lot of products coming out of that factory. Um, and there you can go through and even select between those plants. Uh, it's got two and three highlighted for those first characters. And then for the serial number, as it's going through what's displayed up here, and this is the default. I haven't gone through and modified this at all, but being able to set those ninth positions to go through the, all those uh, available selections. So it can cover quite a range of devices. The test workstation, and when we go through and uh, click the buttons to the mouse, it goes through and um, shows us being active. I was surprised um, that there is not any um, where you can do the like the keyboard test. Um, and uh, where it shows all the different keys to your keyboard. 
although it does show the display settings there. Um, and it's showing some FRUs for the um, for the devices there. Shows the serial number, shows the model number. Um, does it do? I'm trying to press keys on the keyboard just to see if that would go through and um, do anything of, of how that displays on the screen. And it says to press the reset key on the keyboard or click on that for the exit. Um, and I guess it shows the blinking cursor type, but you just kind of see how the setup um, that you have. Oh, so for this, I mean, no, the mouse action just show on the screen. You have to actually do the reset on the keyboard um, to get out of it. And F3 for exit. Uh, or we could go back to that setup. And that would be handy, you know, once you set up for multiple um, uh, display sessions in your printer session, things like that to go back there maybe for those uh, configurations as well. So this should be effectively the online screen as it were, or, or I mean the offline screen where it just has that line at the bottom uh, and it tells some information um, I was thinking that one of eight was the the station address, but that I don't think is the case unless it's showing that, um, I mean, we, we would have to look and even add multiple, um, multiple sessions to kind of see if that would uh, react um, appropriately for... For, for that so but that's um, quite a bit of detail to these uh, to these uh, later um, terminals these info windows and I'll review the malls that actually do the that have the built-in screens at some point here too um, but that is a, um, a a real good view overview of how the uh, customizable these things are and I'm glad to have this unit because um, I'll go through and get it set up um, for that system console and I can even go through and set um, other areas and toggle between those terminal those display sessions um, to um, show what is on the system console and the even in other um, in other display sessions it would be kind of neat uh, I do have printers around that I could maybe find a model of uh, that could be close or emulate those models even set up a printer and things like that um, for my AS400 um, but really kind of cool little terminal that um, I just thought I, I, I found um, one that I had stashed away and I'll have to figure out that um, that connection um, on there to, uh, for connecting into a host I mean this is clearly designed um, to work with a so-called twin X or an AS400 um, system I just have to figure out why that DB15 is inverted from what I normally expect so if you enjoyed this video, click on that like button. And uh, by all means, if you're not subscribed to my channel, uh, please subscribe to grow my subscriber base. I'm getting close. I'm uh, right up close to uh, 750 subscribers, I think. And, um, you know, at least the initial goal is 1,000. I, I found that I'm able to go through and leave community posts and I'm able to share those. Uh, YouTube at one time had the set 
for um, if only if he had a thousand subscribers or above. And they went, looks like they reevaluated that and set that at a lower number. I don't know if that's 500, 600, what the deal is uh, now, but it seemed like once I, I don't know, maybe, or even some odd number like 700. I just know it appeared for me and I'm starting to use that. So I'm able to make those announcements finally, but I still want to grow up the my subscriber base as well. So, but that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.